Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a fourth grade topic, finding the area of a triangle. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to get back to whatever part of video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even your own homework, you can always visit my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. This video is only going to have two parts, so leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and let's get started! So today we're going to be jumping into how to find the area of a triangle. And just like we did for finding the area of a square and a rectangle, we have a formula to help us. Now that formula for your triangle is going to be area equals one half times your base times your height. And you can write this a few different ways. So you can have this or you can have base times height all over two. Or you can have one half times height times base. It really doesn't matter how you write it as long as you have a half, a base, and a height and you're multiplying it all together you have your area formula for your triangle. Now, what is base and what is height? We don't know what that is. We haven't really talked about that. For our area of our square and our rectangles, we use length, width, and side. Now we have something called base and height. What is a base and what is a height for our triangle? Well, that's gonna depend on the type of triangle you have. So notice we have three different types of triangles here. We have on the left, a right triangle. We have an acute triangle in the middle. And on our right, we have an obtuse triangle and our base and height are going to look pretty different for each one of these so let's start with our right triangle that's on the left what is our base for this triangle now what is a base typically your base is the bottom of something the thing that kind of is making it sturdy what you're standing something on your base when you think of base you tend to think of bottom however is there any side of this triangle that's at the bottom of the triangle no there's no side here that's at the bottom, but that's fine. Your base doesn't have to be at the bottom. It typically is, but it doesn't have to be at the bottom. As long as it's a horizontal side of your triangle, you can use that as its base. So do we have a horizontal side for this triangle? Yes, right here. So this can be your base for this triangle. It's completely horizontal. That's what we're gonna be using as the base and notice is at the top of our triangle. Perfectly fine. As long as it's horizontal, we're good. How about this triangle in the middle? Our acute triangle. Do we have a base? Yes. And where is our base? It's actually at the bottom. This right here is a horizontal side of this triangle, which we can use as the base. How about our obtuse triangle over on the right? Do we have a base? Yes. It's going to be this one. Now, forgive me, this is probably not the straightest of sides. I didn't use a ruler here, but this is supposed to be straight. <laughs> this is our bottom of our triangle, which is supposed to be straight, a straight side. So we can use that completely horizontal as the base of this triangle. So now we found our base for each one of these triangles. How about our height? When you think of height, what do you think of? Well, how tall something is. So we wanna know how tall is our triangle. And typically you start from your base and go upward. However, that's not always going to be the case. As you see in our first triangle, our base is actually at the top. So we're gonna start from the top and go down, right? Do we have a side that starts at our base and goes straight down in this case? Yes, this side. So this is going to be our height. And let me write that a little bit better. Our height, this is our height. Like I said, typically you go from your base and go up, but in this case, we're starting our base and going down. We want a side that's completely perpendicular to your base. Completely perpendicular to your base. So we found the height for this triangle on the left. How about our triangle in the middle? What's our height? Well, do we have a side that's completely perpendicular? Remember, we don't want it being diagonal we don't want any kind of leans. We want it completely perpendicular, completely vertical to our base. Do we have that side? No. 
So how are we gonna find our height? Well, remember what our height is. Our height is how tall the triangle is. So if we start from our base and we go to the highest point of this triangle, what do we get? Well, we get something like this. We get a straight line, or what's supposed to be a straight line, that goes from the very top of this triangle to our base. And that actually is a straight line going down to our base. So we can kind of make a make-believe side. And this is going to be our height. So if you have a side, great. But sometimes your triangle won't have a side and you need to do something a little bit like this. And this is going to be our height because we just wanna know how tall is the triangle. How about for our triangle on the right, our obtuse triangle? Do we have a side that's completely vertical, completely perpendicular to our base? No, we don't. So can we do this again where we just draw some lines all the way up to the top not quite because this is not the highest point of this triangle that's not what we want we actually want to do something a little bit different for this type of triangle usually this is probably going to be done for you so you don't have to really worry about doing this yourself but when you see an obtuse triangle like this typically what they do is they extend this out and they find the highest point of this triangle and bring it down. So when you extend out the base a little bit, just so you can see that this is your height, this is what you're typically going to see for this type of obtuse triangle. Now, I don't want you to get confused. We're not growing this triangle any. We're not changing this triangle. We're just trying to determine what the height is. So this section here, is not part of the triangle that we're interested in. We're not gonna be finding the area of this section. We're only using this to find what the height is for this triangle because your height needs to be completely perpendicular to your base. So if this is your base, by extending it out a little bit, we can see what the height would be. We're not actually extending this out. This is our triangle, that's it. This is the height of this triangle. That's it. So now we found the base and the height for all of our triangles here. And this is gonna be pretty much what you're gonna run into for most of your cases. Now we just need to find some numbers so we can use our formula. So I'm gonna replace these B's and H's with some actual numbers. And for this base here for our third triangle, let's say we have 10 inches. Now remember, we're only talking about this right here. We're not talking about this part. This is 10 inches. And let's say for our height, we have eight inches. Now we have numbers, which we can use to plug in to our formula. And one more thing to notice, there's some sides for these triangles that we have no idea what their side is. And that's perfectly fine. If this was 12 yards, it didn't matter. We don't care because it's not a base or a height that we're concerned with. So we don't worry about it. If this was, let's say 10 feet, and this was also 10 feet, we wouldn't care because neither of these are going to be your base or your height. So we're not concerned with the other sides of these triangles as long as we know what our base and our height would be. So going back to this one, we want to find the area for this triangle. And we said that this was gonna be our base and our height, our base, and our height. Our formula says one half base times height. So what's base times height? Well, B times H in this case is going to be your eight times eight. And we're gonna hold off on the yards real fast. I just wanna show you the multiplication that happens. It's eight times eight, right? Eight times eight. But we have to multiply that by either a half or just divide it by two. So what's eight times eight? That's gonna be 64. So if A times eight is 64, what is B times H over two? Well, that's gonna be 64 over two. And what's 64 over two? That's going to equal 32. So base times height all divided by two is gonna equal 32, but that's not it. That's not our area because we have units that we have to take into account. 
This was yards. What's our final unit for this triangle? It's going to be a yard squared. Yard squared. Because this is area. Just like we did for our rectangles and our squares, we're going to have square units at the end of our math. So if this was 32, we're going to have 32 yards squared. How about for our middle triangle? Well, we're going to have area equals our 5 feet times 6 feet all over 2. Well, what's 5 feet times 6 feet? Well, that's going to give you 30 feet. 30 feet what? Squared. All divided by 2. And what's 30 divided by 2? That's going to be 15 feet squared. So the area for this triangle is going to be 15 feet squared. 5 times 6, our height times our base, all divided by 2. 30 divided by 2 gives you 15. We have our square unit as feet squared. How about our last triangle? We have area equals 10 inches times 8 inches all divided by 2. Now what's 10 inches times 8 inches? Let me remove this, give some space here. 10 inches times 8 inches. This is going to be 80 inches squared all over 2. And what's 80 inches squared divided by 2? 40 inches squared. 40 inches squared. So the area for this triangle is going to be 40 inches squared. So as long as you have your base and your height, you multiply those together, divide it by 2, and that's going to be the area for your triangle. But now that we talked about how to use the formula, let's jump into why this formula works. So we have a formula that works to find our area of a triangle, but why does it work? Where does this base and height come from, and why do we have to multiply by a half or divide it by two? Well, that's because this all stems from the area of a parallelogram. Now, the area of a parallelogram, oh, that's not here, of a parallelogram is going to be base times height. And we'll talk about that in another video. But just know that this is based on the area of a parallelogram. Base times height comes directly from that. But how is a triangle related to a parallelogram? It's cool that we know that its formula comes from the parallelogram and parallelogram has base times height, but where is the correlation? Well, that's gonna be a little easier to show you. Let's say we have this triangle here, our first triangle. This is a right triangle and imagine, imagine you extended this triangle out in this fashion. We just make believe we're extending this out just like this. What do you have here now? Well, this is now a rectangle. Let's uh, write that a little easier. Rectangle. This is a rectangle now. We have a triangle that if we extend it out in this fashion, we get a rectangle. Now, what's the area of a rectangle? We said that was length times width. Length times width. However, if we said that the area for a triangle comes from parallelograms, we know that a rectangle is a form of parallelogram, and we can use base times height for it as well. What will be the base of this rectangle? Once again, it's the bottom. What's the height of this rectangle? We said the same thing. It's going to be this here. What's perpendicular to your base? That's the same thing as length times width, right? So the area of a rectangle, length times width, is the same as base times height. But this triangle, the original triangle, you see it's only half of this rectangle. And that's why you do one half base times height. Your triangle makes up half of your parallelogram. In this case, because it's a right triangle, it makes up half of your rectangle. And that's gonna be true for 
all of these triangles. They're going to make up half of your parallelogram. So let's make our parallelograms and see how it really does make up half of the parallelogram. So in this case, you can just, let's say, extend this out. It has the same type of slant and it goes out like this. And it's supposed to be straight, forgive me. But you notice that this is exactly half of this parallelogram. So if the area of a parallelogram is base times height, you're just trying to find half of that. And you get this triangle. How about this one? Well, the same thing. We're going to extend this out. Get the same type of lean if we can. And then extend this out. And notice this is half of the parallelogram. As long as you know the area of the parallelogram, find half of that and you're going to get the area for these triangles. That's why this formula works the way it does. And once again, we'll go over the area of the parallelogram in another video, but I wanted you to see why this formula works for triangles the way it does. So I hope you were able to follow along with today's video and help you now understand how you can find the area for your triangles. However, if you have any questions about what we saw today or even your own homework, remember, you can visit my Facebook page at Tumia Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found the video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I already hope it's helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Simple.